those types of problems have a name, believe it or not. This type of problem that you just did in class during your in-class exercise, they have a name. They're called Fermi problems, named after Enrico Fermi, a Nobel Prize winning physicist at the University of Chicago. And I first encountered these, I first learned about them in uh, Reader's Digest, actually. How much time? We only got 15 more minutes, do we? You guys took a, long, took a fair bit of time. But in Reader's Digest, so imagine yourself in an interview. Imagine yourself in an interview in the suit that you bought yesterday and the shirt you bought this morning. And maybe the tie you, you, know, you borrowed from your dad for the guys. Girls, I'm not going to comment on your... I'm not sure what you're supposed to wear in interviews, but guys I can speak about. And so you're in an inter interview, and, they ask, and the interviewer asks you this question. You are on a boat on the deepest, uh, the deepest part of the ocean, which I do believe is a channel in, I, and I was, it's in, in the Atlantic or the Pacific, which is a lot of ocean. There's a real deep channel, the deepest part of the ocean. Where is it? Pacific? Pacific. In the Pacific, there's a channel. Marianas Trench. So you're on a boat over the Marianas Trench, and you hold a cannonball in your hand, a piece of lead, and you drop it over the edge. How long will it take that cannonball to descend to the bottom of the ocean? Now, remember, you are in an interview and ask this question. And this is a real-life question an interview has asked interviewees in an interview. What do you answer? I'd ask them what uh, increments they want me to know. How long? Time? Hours? I can tell you the wrong answer. <laughs> I don't know. Three hours? <laughs> That's the wrong answer. What was the interviewer wanting you to do? Do exactly what you just did in class, right? Estimate depth of channel, estimate rate of descent, do math, provide your best reasonable answer. And because that's a real life task you're going you're, you're to encounter real life tasks that are not unfamiliar to that. And it does feel very much like budgeting, as I've already said, because you are dealing with some knowns. I mean, in, in a very real sense, you are predicting the future there, too, right? You're predicting how long will it take for that cannonball to descend. Anyway, so if you get that interview question, whenever you're in an interview, now you know how to tackle it. Let us learn about budgets. Budgets are used for two main purposes. It's used for planning and control. Purpose number one, for motivation. Reason number two, okay? For planning and control, budgets are used by, uh, what, what uh, companies will do is they'll make a budget. This is what we want next year to look like. So that's the plan. Right? Planning and control. That's the plan. This is what we want our budget to be like next year. And then control involves making sure the plan happens. Okay? So planning and control. Now, if you were doing that, if you're planning and trying to control and make it happen, give me an adjective to describe the type of information you would want. Adjective. Anybody? Accurate. Accurate is exactly the word I'm fishing for. We want this to be just as accurate as possible, right? I mean, clearly we all as a class didn't do that great a job at the uh, counting task. But still, you can see that in general, you want to be as accurate as possible and you want information that is as accurate as possible. Okay, budgets are also used for motivation, which means, which means people are paid bonuses based on whether or not they meet or exceed their budgeted profit target for the year. Big bonuses. I've already, we've already named numbers in here, have we not? Million dollar bonuses. 
Remember I said something about that's, that's enough. Nine or eight ways? Huh? Oh, that actually, it was 11 million split eight or nine ways. So a million plus a piece, as I recall, I said something to the effect of, you know, that's enough for a house in Warrensburg. Or, or what? <laughs> or several with nice cars, or you could become a slumlord. Now, if you're a manager who's got a million dollar bonus waiting at the end of the year if you meet your profit target, what do you want that target to be? Adjectives. High. High? Attainable. Attainable. Okay. Don't start too high because you want that million dollar bonus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's why high was kind of surprising. <laughs> attainable, and in that you're being a little noble even. You know, I would say, yeah, exactly. I'm going to say something highly related to that. I'm going to say easy. You know, I mean, attainable means you might have to actually still work for it. You know, whereas, hey, who wants to work for it? Who wants to worry about, you know, having to work for it? Let's make it as easy as possible. Yeah, kind of political. It can be political and kind of yucky. Now, <clears throat> this, is a, this is an issue with budgeting in general, and that is clearly these aren't the same number, are they? These are not the same number, and yet budgeting, the one number is used for both purposes, but they're clearly not the same number, and so that's why there is a lot of tension in the budgeting process in many organizations. Now, let me tell you this, about 80% of all budgets are achieved or exceeded. About 80% of all budgets are achieved or exceeded. Who's winning? Accuracy or easy? What? Who said? I said easy. Why did you say easy? Because if you're, if you're not failing very often, I mean only 20% of the time you're not meeting your goals then there's either 20% of people out there that are actually educated, <coughs> motivated. What should, what, if, what, let me ask it this way. What would, if accuracy were, be, were true, if accuracy were winning, what percent of budgets would be achieved? 50-50. 50-50, which I think is a, a shorter way to say what you were saying. 50-50. Um, and so, if accuracy were winning, 50-50, it'd be closer to 50-50. We know... Easy is winning because it is something like 75, 80% of all budgets are achieved or exceeded. Why would it be 50 /50? Statistically, you, if you're trying to be accurate, you'd be just as likely to be over or under, as under. Right, if you're, if you're just trying to do the best job you can do, sometimes you'll be over, sometimes you'll be under with your prediction, with your budget. Uh, whereas, it, if it's easy, I mean, if it's really, really, really easy, uh, you meet your budget 100% of the time because it's so easy that it's automatic. So it's 50-50 to 100 percent. Ma'am? If you're exceeding it, aren't you kind of blowing the budget? That's but you're earning your bonus. Who cares? Well, you're, you're no, if you exceed the budget, you don't get a bonus. No, no, budget, 